I hope you didn't think I was leaving when I went through the curtain. <laughs> they like to mess with me and hide the pulpit. No, I'm only joking. Congratulations to Dr. Peter. And um, I have to say, I'm really pleased Peter decided to grow his hair back after the graduation photo. Have a look later. Um, so, we... Uh, we <laughs> I dream about that clock. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we really don't have a ton of time this morning. It's been a busy, busy morning, which is, which is great. But uh, it's a good job I've only got eight points in my sermon. <laughs> only, only joking. Actually, I'm not joking. I've got eight points. But let's get on. It's 1 Samuel 17. I'm not going to read it all because I know Peter covered the first part of this last week. You're in a series about David, and I have to say, David is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Um, He's such a contradiction, he's such a fascinating character. He's a a fierce and sometimes brutal warrior. Um, He's a poet, he's a musician. And what's unique about David, I think, is that you can read about all of his exploits, all of the things that he did, you can read about that. But then also, if you go to the Psalms, he himself writes about how he felt during these moments in his life that you can read about. And I don't know of anywhere else that that happens in the Bible. And I would strongly encourage you to to study the life of David. Go through 1 Samuel and the other references in the Old Testament, then read his psalms. And he does, he wears his heart on his sleeve in those psalms. And he talks, he writes, he writes how he feels when things are going well. He writes how he feels when things are going badly. He writes how he feels when he's consumed with guilt for his own sin and the terrible things he did in a moment of weakness. He writes about his relationship with God. It's, it's a remarkable thing that you can read about his exploits and then read how he actually wrote down his feelings. So, today, David and Goliath. The title for today is David the Vulnerable One. So, 1 Samuel 17 and 38. The Israelites are faced with Goliath. Goliath, this this giant who's been taunting them for some time. And David says uh, says that he will uh, fight this giant. And Saul, it says in verse 18 dressed David in his own tunic, put a coat of armor on him, and a bronze helmet on his head. David fastened his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I'm not used to them. So he took them off. He took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. The Philistine, jumping on, said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, and I will give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. David said to him, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin. I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. Let's leave that there. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and for all that it contains for us. And we ask now, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will open our minds and speak to each one of us from your word. In your precious name, amen. So, the title for today is David, the Vulnerable One. What does the word vulnerable mean? According to the dictionary, vulnerable is when you are weak and without protection and you're open to attack or harm. So that does sum up David in this situation. David is a young man. He's facing a giant. He's facing a battle-hardened soldier in full armor with a massive sword, a man who has defied all of the armies of Israel. They're all quaking and fearful of him. David has stepped forward to fight him. Saul gives him his armor. And David tries it, and he gives him his armor and his sword. And David is uncomfortable with them because he's never used them before. 
So he says, I can't use these. And so there he is, this young man facing this heavily armoured giant. So David fits perfectly in the definition of vulnerable. In relation to where he was and what was going to happen to him, he was immensely vulnerable. He was weak, he was without protection, he was open to attack and harm. Anybody feel vulnerable here today? Does anybody here feel with the things that are going on in your life that you feel weak, that you feel open to attack or harm? You see, David was vulnerable. Goliath was not vulnerable. Goliath was an immensely huge and strong man with armor, with a sword. He had no threat. There was no physical threat to Goliath. He had no expectation of any kind of harm. He had no expectation of any kind of harm if he'd been faced by the best soldier that the Israelite army put forward. They were all too scared to step forward. So now, faced with a young man with no sword, with no armor, he had no expectation of any kind of harm. So David is vulnerable. He's faced with a problem that is not vulnerable. And we sometimes face issues that co concern us, and those issues are very real, and they can seem to be giants. And they have no threat. There's nothing we can see that would make that problem or difficulty go away. So we can sometimes find ourselves in the position that David is in, weak, open to attack, vulnerable, facing a problem that is too big for him to really understand how he can deal with it. Here's the thing, and this is, this is the sit up straight, write something down moment. David wanted to be vulnerable. Now that seems crazy. Would any one of us here want to be vulnerable? Would any one of us here want to feel weak and open to attack? Of course not. But David wanted to be vulnerable. Why? He wasn't even in the army. He was not a soldier. He would not have been in the, 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 the group of men who would have been fighting the Philistines or fighting Goliath. He wasn't kidnapped from his house and dragged to the battlefield and told he's got to fight Goliath. He's not persuaded by any of his family. You've got to go and fight this man. He's not being blackmailed by Saul who's forcing him to fight this man. No, why was David there? David was there because he'd gone to deliver a plate of sandwiches. That's true. Read the story. He'd been sent to the front with some food for his brothers. But he hears this challenge being given to the God that he adores and he, that he serves. He, he, he sees this man cursing his God, defying his God. And David said, why, is, why are we allowing this man to do this? And nobody wants to fight him, so David says, I'll fight him. And he steps into that vulnerability with full intent And what's interesting to me about the life of David is that it was when David was vulnerable that he was most alive. That's when his faith came alive. He says in this, when he says to Saul, he says, I, when I was looking after sheep, sometimes a wild lion would come and take the sheep and I'd fight it and I'd grab it and I'd kill it or a bear and I would fight that bear and when I fought that bear and I fought that lion, I won because God was with me. He spent a lot of his time on the run. Saul wanted to kill him. He was moving from place to place, hiding in caves with a small band of men. His life was almost constantly on the edge. There were battles to be won, people to, be, to fight, people trying to kill him. His own family rebelled against him. And in those moments, he was so alive, his faith was so alive, he was so close to his God that he never for one moment feared what was going to happen. He wanted to be vulnerable. When he was vulnerable, his faith came alive. 
David made a serious mistake at one point in his life. He saw Bathsheba, a married woman, bathing. He lusted after her. He had her brought to him. Her husband was away fighting. He, he got her pregnant. And then in a conspiracy, he conspired to have her husband killed. And God punished him for that sin. He paid a price for that sin. And guess what? He wrote about his penitence in the Psalms. When he committed that sin with Bathsheba, was he vulnerable? No. When he saw Bathsheba bathing, he was king. He was in command of everything. He was living in a royal palace. He wasn't away fighting. He took a stroll on the roof of his palace, basking in everything he had, and that's when he saw her. And that's when he fell into sin and when he made the mistake and committed the sins that he made. It's when he's vulnerable. It's when he's vulnerable that his faith comes alive. It's when he was fat and safe and secure that he fell into sin. That's a lesson for us. Because you see, God wants us in human terms, to feel vulnerable. Because when we're vulnerable, that's when we come close to him and we, our faith comes alive. It's almost as if when we're in a situation that makes us feel vulnerable, instead of crumbling and folding, there should almost be like a tingle of anticipation, a tingle of excitement and that says, I'm going to take this to God and I'm going to give this to God and I know that God is going to deliver me and bring me through this. <clears throat> That's why David was prepared to be there. He was prepared to be vulnerable. It's why he rejected all of the worldly help. He'd have looked great in the armor. The Bible says he was a handsome man. He'd have looked great in the armor. The armor was tried and tested and battle-hardened in the world. But he didn't want to rely on something that made him look good. He had no interest in something that everybody in the world would have said, yeah, yeah, that's what you need. You need that breastplate. You need that sword. You need that helmet. Those are the things that you need in order to deal with your problem. And when we as Christians get into a time of difficulty or challenge, sometimes the world will say, you need to be doing this, 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 and this. But it's when we're vulnerable, when we come to God and we say, I can't deal with this in any other way. You need to help me. Martin Luther, when he was brought before the court of the Rome, Holy Roman Emperor to answer for what he was saying about how the Bible should be available in the languages that, that people could understand. And he was brought before the court of the Holy Roman Emperor, a young, just a monk, and he's in this place with all of these soldiers. And he said, here I stand. I can't do anything else. It's like Elijah on Mount Carmel with all of the prophets of Baal. And he calls down the fire of God from heaven. He puts everything on God. It's Gideon who has an army of 30,000 people to fight the Midianites. And God says, I want you to send 27,000 of them home. You're going to do this with 3,000. It's Moses at the shores of the Red Sea with the sea in front and the Egyptian soldiers behind and there's no way out. There is no hope at all in human terms. It's, it's total vulnerability. Moses doesn't run, he doesn't hide, he doesn't cry. He says, stand still and see the salvation of God. That's the message for us today. If you're facing a giant today, if you have a problem that's looming in your life and it's causing you to be concerned, feeling vulnerable is not a sign of weakness in spiritual terms. What it should do is turn on your faith. We have a choice when we're in a vulnerable moment. We can fold and run or we can turn on our faith and Put everything on God and say, God, I need you to intervene and deal with this for me. In closing, it's interesting when you read the story about how the two of them approached the fight. 
It says that Goliath was approaching slowly. He was getting closer to David, but he was moving slowly in all of his majesty, in all of his menace, with all of his threat. And that's sometimes how challenges approach us. Sometimes we get hit with something bang out of the blue. Other times we have an issue and it's there and it seems to get bigger and bigger and it's getting closer and closer as it's coming to the fight. David, David, it says, ran quickly to Goliath. David was saying, bring this on because I have God with me. So let's get this going now. And he ran towards Goliath. Chinese philosopher Sun Tzu said that attack is the secret form of defense. Somebody else said that the best defense is a good offense. Opinions vary as to whether it was Bill Belichick or George Washington who said it first. (laughs) Two, Two interesting characters. But that's what it is, because if we have God with us, and we've given God our vulnerability, and we're saying to him, we can't deal with this unless you help us, and he comes in and he helps us, then we can run, and we can deal with the challenge that we're facing. So, let's pray as we close. And as we pray, I want to ask anybody here who is struggling with something? Anybody here who is worried about something? Anybody here who's got a Goliath in their life? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. If that's you, you know it's you. I just want you to pray with me as you hear these words and echo them in your heart. And let's run towards that Goliath and deal with him this morning. Our dear Heavenly Father, your word shows us that it is when we are vulnerable. That, Lord, is when our faith can come alive. And Lord, if there is anybody here this morning who feels vulnerable, who is hemmed in by the world, who is dealing with something that is difficult and challenging and worrying, Lord, I just pray that you would give them that courage to step forth in faith, to give whatever that problem is to you right now, right now here, Lord. They are giving you that problem. They're telling you what it is. And Lord, we want to run towards it. And we want to see you defeat it and give us the victory. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Amen.